Hi guys, I'm just going to quickly uh, talk you through what I'm doing here today. So, what I've got... Here is a old filing cabinet which I have converted into a predominantly cold smoker but I'm going to probably try and do some uh, some normal smoking, hot smoking in there too. So uh, this is what I've done. I have cut out the bottom of this drawer, bought a shelving unit to go in there. I have cut the bottom of that drawer and put a shelving unit in there. I have cut holes in this drawer here. This drawer will be my smoke spreader. And these drawers here, the reason why they're like this is I can actually lay meat down on here. Or, if I wanted to, as you can see right through, I can actually hang meat across the top here so it hangs down through them so I can have actually have meat hanging from this height all the way down to this height so I can get really long sort of uh, cuts of fish or big joints of meat in there hanging. And then the bottom drawer is where I'm going to put my smoking apparatus or I've also got some barbecue, a barbecue in there which I, if I want to do some hot smoking I'll probably sit that in there. As you can see there's some vents in the bottom here already but what I've done in case I need some more air is I've actually uh, put this on which is if you look in there closely you can see all the way through there I've cut some holes and this will control airflow. I can have it open a little bit or a little bit more. And obviously uh, the problem, or first what I saw potentially as a problem was that there's lots of gaps in here but obviously the air's got to travel for the smoke. But again I wasn't quite sure if that would be enough so what I've done is I've put another one of these on the top which again as you can see opens like that. Okay so next what I did is I was looking online and I was reading a lot of people's blogs and stuff like that and a lot of people were pointing at the uh, I think it's called the Amazing Tube and it's basically uh, it gives you a, a really controlled cold smoke over a prolonged period of time but obviously it's, it's, a, it's an American product and the way I am didn't want to wait for it to be shipped as once I get something in my head I want to get it done straight away so what I've done is I found an alternative which is this lovely bit of kit right here that is actually part of uh, it's like an exhaust an exhaust pipe part uh, I mean I don't actually know anything really about cars so I can't even tell you what part it is but I found it on eBay and it's uh, I mean it's it's gonna be absolutely perfect I think this is my first time testing it I've uh, been I'm gonna give it a good old test today it looks exactly the same as the amazing tube so I don't see why not all it does is hole on both ends so I've just covered that with some tin foil and as you can see inside I've filled it up with wood chips I've gone for a mixture of hickory and oak as I'm going to be smoking some uh, some pork belly and that I've been curing for seven days now to make some bacon so I'm gonna have some smoked bacon I've uh, done two different cures which I'll put the recipes for on my description page underneath this video but yeah so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video now I'm going to go and get the meats I've got to first of all wash off the uh, wash off the cure dry them off and then I'll bring them out uh, I'll then start it up and give it a go hi guys uh, I've just brought out the fridge the two pork bellies that I've been I've had curing now for a week so this is this is them after the week I've had them in the fridge so you can see it's drawn out a load of moisture what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try and position this somewhere. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the bag, discard all of this. First of all, I'm just going to quickly just rinse my hands off. So I'm going to bring this out of the bag here. You can actually see how hard it is. So it's really drawn out quite a lot of moisture. Let's get this on. I really want to wash off the cure from that. Now, okay, 
I've actually put them in slightly different cures. Just uh, this second one here, I've added a few other spices just to try. I mean, this is really, I'm probably as new to this as you. So it's just to try out a few different things. I mean, for most of the stuff that I read online, people that do some charcuterie and cured meats and smoking and stuff. It's a bit of trial and error, obviously, over years, people have perfected recipes, but I mean, everyone's always learning new things. So yeah, I've decided I'll try my own sort of concoction on here. Obviously still following the same uh, curing salt and salt ratio to make sure that it cures safely. But I've just added a few extra spices in there. Which I can actually smell really quite strong, so it'll be interested to see how this has turned out. Okay, so here we have some cured pork belly. So you see I trimmed off the skin. Try keeping as much of the fat on as I could. It was pretty tough, I had a really sharp knife there. Uh, but I tried getting as close as I could. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pat it dry. Once it's patted dry, I'll then take it outside and put it in the smoker. So. Oh wow, it's really actually drying up surprisingly quick. Just a quick wipe before I flip it over. I mean, I'm sure you can actually see from the camera how tough that it actually is now. I mean, when you get fresh pork belly before it's being cured, it's lovely and just flexible and just quite soft. But as you can see, it's actually dried up and really quite tough. I mean, that's part of the curing process is that it draws out all of that water that you saw in the bags there. There was no water in the bag, obviously, before I started the cure. I have read online that really you want to get it as dry as possible to get the max amount of smoke in. I don't know whether it's true or not. I don't know the theory behind it. But what I do know is the person telling me, or telling us, knows a lot more about smoking than me, so I'm going to trust him and try and get this really as dry as possible. One more thing I do want to point out is, as you can see here from my bad butchering, this is where the ribs were. This is a really nice piece of pork belly that I actually bought. It was actually almost a whole pork belly that I bought from a local butcher's. It's uh, organic pork, uh, local, local produce. And I would advise when you're trying to do stuff like this, try and get the best produce as possible. Uh, I didn't realise at the time but it had the, the bones in obviously I, I normally buy my pork belly from a supermarket so it doesn't normally come with, with the uh, ribs in so actually what I'll probably do next time is ask the, the butcher to take the, you'll find it a lot easier than me and probably do a much neater cleaner job than me so I'll probably ask him to remove the ribs and maybe even take the skin off as uh, again I'm sure he'll do a much better job than me with that but yeah so uh, just one more tip just try and get the best quality meat that you can, whatever it might be, or even fish. So, uh, right, what I'm gonna do now is just leave this probably on the side here for about an hour, maybe two hours, just to make sure it's nice and dry. And then I'll take it out to smoke. All right, guys, so here we are back again. And as you can see, I've got the meat on the trays here. Just sat there nicely. What I've done is I've put them in the uh, top trays. You can see I put them both in there, even though I could spread them out. But I don't want the temperature to cold smoke, so a little bit concerned that possibly the temperature of the smoke might warm it up too much at the bottom. So if I bring it up here, it might even be a bit cooler. Uh, new to this, so I'm just going to give it a go. I've got, as you can see here, I've got the thermometer probe in, and I've got that set as an alarm. You don't want it going too hot in there. Again, I've sort of read online that the fat starts to melt at about 150, which you don't want. So. I mean, I'm going to try and keep this as cool as possible, really, just full of smoke. So, uh, here it goes. What I'll do is I'm just going to close this one. So that closed now. Let's go ahead and open this bottom drawer. I said this is the first for me. So what I've got here is a uh, blowtorch. I'm just going to light it up. You don't want flames, I've been told. Uh, what you're looking for probably is a bit of flames at first, one for a couple of seconds and blow the flames out and then you'll have some embers and then it's just a case of letting those embers burn over a long period of time. So
Right, here's some gloves. I'm not quite sure they're heat proof, but I'm sure they're a lot more heat proof than what my skin is. So let's uh, give it a go again. Told that the flames will probably just go out on their own. Right, what I've done is I've just sat that down in there in the bottom drawer. So to go ahead and close this bottom drawer. I guess just hope for the best. Let's uh, give these vents a little open. Keep the air flowing. And yeah, let's open these top ones a little bit. And that will let the air circulate through the smoker. But yeah, that's it really guys. So uh, what we'll do, maybe just have a quick sneak peek to see if it is working. And yes, as you can see, it's already smoky in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close that back up. And yeah, let it smoke for a few hours. I'll keep checking the temperature to make sure. It's got an alarm anyway, but I'll have to make sure I don't want to go in too high. But yeah, let's check out the results. I just want to quickly point out, guys, that I've had it smoking now for about an hour, and I've had a little peek in it. It's absolutely full of smoke. The temperature's still, it's actually it's below 50, so below 50 Fahrenheit, which is quite nice, nice and cool. Definitely not going to melt the fat at that temperature, but it's absolutely full of smoke. But what I was worried about is too much smoke seeping out of these gaps. I don't know if you'll be able to catch that, but maybe if I come around this way, you might notice it in the sun there. You see there's a little bit of smoke seeping out. I mean, the sun's actually really accentuating it, but I'm actually really quite pleased. I mean, there's not, doesn't seem to be much smoke smoking out. I've just closed the top there just so it does really come out as much as it can. But yeah, once I go ahead and open back up the top, it'll mostly come out there. There's almost nothing coming out the front a minute ago. So you can see already the smoke's starting to come back out the top. So I can really try and control that if I want. The temperatures aren't too high, so I think what I'm going to do is just leave that shut. But yeah, leave it for another few hours, guys, and uh, we'll catch up with you then.